Welcome everyone to Unscripted Coding. Today we are doing yet another episode all in VR. I have, of course, my trusty Oculus Quest. I have my usual disclaimer that this cord is to record video. It really isn't tied to a computer right now. Um, and also, of course, I have a Logitech K380 for a Bluetooth keyboard and a uh, a Logitech M720 mouse um, to connect and use some of the features on the Oculus Quest. Today we're going to try and really do a quick update of what is available on virtual reality headsets. Uh, there's two objectives today. One is I wanted to try two other browsers and I already look down them and I'll show you quickly why I think they're unsuitable. And number two, I wanted to show you guys uh, GitHub code spaces on visual or on Oculus Quest. Uh, that is somewhat similar to VS Code.dev. So let's check out what we have here. You'll remember in our last video, let me just adjust my set here. Uh, that we tried VS Code.dev on Oculus Quest. And in short, I thought this was one of the best ways to work on Oculus Quest, even though it is flawed. Uh, as a programmer, of course, VS Code is limiting. You aren't getting a full desktop uh, IDE, but if you want to punch out some code and have the sense of three monitors, you can do it all on the browser. That is, of course, if your tool set allows you to. So here I have, for demonstration purposes, uh, just running something on YouTube, some music on the side. Uh, I have perhaps some text to refer some manual or some documentation, and finally VS Code.dev. Now, you'll remember that one of the real challenges I had was copying and pasting because this is a mobile browser. And what that means is you have to hold to actually select text properly. Um, and I think there is a right click. Maybe not. Um, regardless, it was very frustrating in Visual Studio Code because I'm used to just moving text all around all the time. So in this case, yeah, it's very difficult. And what I found is I used shift and arrow keys instead to, to move and cut and copy paste things. Not ideal, but barely workable. Now, uh, what once suggested to me, and I'm going back to the Oculus controllers here, is that there are two other browsers that you can use in VR. And I immediately tried it out. Uh, Firefox Reality is one of them, and the other is Wolvik. And the story is they're both basically the same browser. Uh, Firefox is now discontinued. Wolvik is going to continue on its path. Now, um, I'm going to go and um, go on vscode.dev and see if we can run this. Now, uh, I think, I actually don't know how to do this, but okay. Uh, I know there must be a way to move. This monitor, but uh, you can definitely resize it and it looks quite crisp by my eye, even on a very uh, Small frame. So let's go to uh, let's go one time side. Okay, um, I am going to settings here. Let's see, display. 
Uh, ah, let's not do that. So it's resizing the text according to your display density. That was quite nice, but uh, it is interesting because we could have seen that it did very well even when it scrolled down. Um, it's a bit disappointing that uh, they would resize the text um, and don't have an immediately obvious way of resizing. Uh, you can add tabs as well. So we do have three, but you'll notice that these are tabs. These are three separate windows um, and you run out after three tabs. So if you wanted to store background tabs, that's a problem. Uh, the other thing that I've noticed is, let's say we have a new file here. Do a new text file. The other thing that uh, you'll notice is that the keyboard is supported and I can type, tab and type, but the mouse is not. I can move the mouse and there is no sort of a uh, cursor. And this is because it is a VR first web browser. It's meant for you to use videos and so on. And even if I'm using the controller, it, it's all of the same problems. I'd have to say, hold, onto a custom word, let's say this one, and, and move it along. Um, it is not a mouse experience. I think, nope, I don't think you can use your hands either. So this almost completely rules it out. I actually really like how smooth and fluid it looks already, but um, for a working productivity tool without a mouse, you're, you're not gonna get very far. And if I scroll all the way across, where did Wolvik go? Not right here at the top. Um, it's the same. It's the same web browser. Now I'm hoping that development over time, especially seeing as how now that Firefox is gone and and moved to a different one, um, that we would have some help. But essentially, it only moved over in February, just a couple months ago. So the overall web browser has not changed all that much. The same limitations up front, you have um, three tabs limited, there is no mouse support, and you are using your controller. Now, the other thing that is interesting is this is all within one app. It's not like the Oculus browser where you can interact with the the Oculus Home. Now, I'm not I'm not going to give it any points plus or minus. I don't think that is a huge difference. But um, as much as I really like how what they've done here. Um, it, it's not usable for productivity purposes. Okay, so we've got that down. Let's go back into our browser. And I wanted to show you guys that Code Spaces works. So this is a very recent project that I'm going to post up in another, in another, uh, in another video. Uh, but if we go into Code Spaces and create a new code space, you're going to see something very, very similar to VS Code.dev. Now, what this is, is a service in which um, GitHub is going to take a repository and set up an appropriate VS Code space for you. Uh, it is just like before, it's kind of done on the cloud. Um, and because of that, you're going to get uh, the ability to use certain extensions, but not all your extensions. Um, you're on the default image. It has Python, Docker, Node.js, a bunch of different things. Uh, oh, we can configure our code space. And um, it's already set up all my files ready to go. So if I wanted to update readme, I can. I'm going to put this aside. 
and we have our mouse here, and I am able to. Oh, what happened here? But turn off to get started. Let's look at our readme again. Um, and ah, uh, yes, the scroll doesn't work either. I forgot about that. That was a problem. Um, but you can see it's almost identical, albeit on a white theme instead of a dark theme. Um, and you're able to just start, start running it. Um, I'm gonna go deeper into, uh, code spaces in a, another video that's more, um, dedicated to, to desktop usage, because I think it'll be very handy in the future, but on a web, uh, on a VR headset, uh oh, what did I do here? On a VR headset, this this is as close as you're gonna get, and you have everything ready. And as far as I can tell, Code Spaces is free during the beta for individual users. So do apply. It took me months to get on it, but uh, it's gonna be fun to play around with. Uh, once it's out of beta, I think it's somewhere on the order of 25, 30 cents an hour. So it's not going to break your bank either. Though, if you're going to work on it 24 seven, it can add up. So, uh, I hope that was helpful. Um, VR productivity. I love browsers. They are the closest, uh, thing to actually just taking your headset to the coffee shop. No uh, laptop attached, no wires. You can get away with doing quite a bit of work here. Browsers are the closest thing to it, but they're not perfect. You're still making compromises, unfortunately. Um, I'm going to try and keep up to date. If you guys do have suggestions, um, someone brought uh, Firefox and Wolvik to my attention. If there are new kind of browsers on the horizon, new updates, do let me know and I'll cover them as I go. Uh, thanks for watching and I will see you guys next week.